Got it. Hmm? Click on got it. Sit and die. Oops. Okay, we're just letting people get into the um, in and get set up. Things are taking a little bit of time today, tonight. Welcome to our round table. It's not visible here, but there's one right around here. <laughs> okay. All right. So Okay, temporarily, I want to mute uh, mute people. So, so Jane, you've got some. Pam, I'll let you turn things on when you're ready to speak, but right now we're trying to get some, getting crosstalk from people who's connecting up. Okay. So, oh, there's, I turn off the waiting room. All right, so now we should be ready to go. All right, now I need to get my agenda up here. You know, welcome to our January 6th roundtable meeting where this is something where you give us a chance to give a, a little more feedback than usual. And we'll try and get, get you up to date on what we are doing and what we have been doing in the past. and. Uh, and try and look at what we should be doing next year, this year coming up. Mm -hmm. So, Dale, do you have a treasurer's report for us? Got to ask. <clears throat> oh, we're waiting for Dale. Yes, I do. Ah. Have it up. Let me share my screen. Again, there's the share screen. Oh, geez. There we go. Sorry, I have more things open than I thought I did. So here's my treasurer's report. Wild boy. Sorry. So the current month, so the current month always lags because I um, I report on the latest statement, which statement date was Jan it was December twenty second. So our beginning balance for this statement was fourteen oh nine sixty two. We had eleven cents of interest, and uh, ending balance of fourteen oh nine seventy three. Uh, well, we did have a contribution of $100 that was um, actually uh, um, deposited after this statement date. So I uh, I deposited that to savings. Doesn't really matter in this one. We don't really earn any more in interest from savings rather than from checking, but I can move it whenever I want. So. I thought it'd be nice to maybe build the savings up a little bit. So what doesn't show is another $100 in a savings account. So that's my report. Um, this year, our really our only income was from contributions from people. And uh, we had somewhere in the neighborhood of $250 of contributions. And... Uh, somewhere in the neighborhood of, well, in fact, so we had $300 in contributions and 165 of uh, expenses this year, last year. 
we will have a few more expenses here coming up for uh, things like websites and uh, uh, and uh, 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 Secretary of State's renewal uh, and, and corporation renewal. That'll be coming up shortly. So uh, that's my report. If you have any questions, you could certainly ask in the chat and uh, I will be more than happy to uh, open the books, but this is pretty much the open books. Okay. Let me stop the sharing. All right. Um, Pat Dagan isn't with us tonight because he's uh, somewhere where he can't get phone service and communication service, but he did write up a little bit of uh, what was going on at the Echo Lake and at the new Aurora Village uh, <clears throat> porta potty setup. The new portable at Aurora Village has been working uh, for over one month now, since December 11th. It is used regularly and primarily for the intended purposes. The last several days at the Lou at the park has been <laughs> as the toilet bowl freezes over when the temperature drops. It's one of the disadvantages of relying on solar power only for the stopping the, uh, the freezing. This has been a yearly occurrence with sub-freezing weather. This is talking about the Echo Lake Blue. It's fortunate to have one of the transit center of the park and ride. The portable has been cleaned usually three or three times a day and has 24 hour security. Um, Switching to Echo Lake, there was an abandoned boat in the in the lake uh, that's been taken out and it's nowhere in sight. There is an inflatable without air near the shore where the boat was. They've been there with the boat and have not engaged with the park department about its presence. Winter ducks visit Echo Lake. I've seen usual coots, widgeons, and mallards keeping my eyes open for wood ducks, which occasionally have been seen. And that's Pat Deegan's report. Okay. Um, Kathy Goodrich has, was in attendance at the 198 and Aurora Housing Project meeting at St. Mark's. And would you like to can, tell us a little Can bit? I just jump in really quick? And uh, I want to you know, publicly thank Pat for his, um, really for his dedication to the Echo Lake Park and to uh, his dedication to working with King County and the city to uh, not only establish uh, toilets and porta potties, but to maintain them and to maintain security. He's, he's been a really an ever present uh, presence in, uh, in the ear of people at the city and people at King County and Metro. And um, even though he's not here, I think that he, he certainly deserves a, a, a big thank you and, I just want all of you who may not be uh, as familiar with the things that he's done um, and his dedication to picking up litter and m multiple times a day on the, the platform and, and in Echo Lake Park. So I just want to give him a big kudo. Yes. Well earned. Okay. Kathy, you're... Um, find your mute mute button and <laughs> okay moving <laughs> we'll, we'll give you a minute to find that um, we have a report on what we did in 2023 that we'll go through uh, I had up there we are I'll share that. Doctor, you can also you click can... your picture and the unmute button will come up in the corner of it. <laughs> okay, where are we? There we are. Okay. That's all right. 
now you should be able to see some of the, the stuff that, that we did over the year, hopefully you know, showing up on the screen. Um, talking about the, the meetings in 2023, we had the roundtable discussion last year and board elections, and we'll have those coming up in a few minutes here. Uh, February, we had emergency services with uh, Ryan Sabla of City of Zavala of the City of Shoreline. Uh, in March, we had the new city manager, Bristol Ellington, introduce himself. April, we had Sid Kuboy talking about heat pumps and how to work that into your home environment. May, we had auxiliary communication system with Jack Solmicki and uh, Shoreline Historical Meeting Museum. Uh, Kenneth do do what and the museum director introducing us to what was going on with the historical museum. In June, we had the senior center with Teresa Lacroix, uh, new manager there, introducing herself. July, we had the dedication of the park bench, featuring founder Dwight Stevens in Echo Lake. August, we were not not active. As usual, uh, September, we had Shoreline District Court uh, meeting the, the judges at Shoreline District Court. October, we had the ICHS Health Center uh, introducing itself to the neighborhood, Dana Nunez. Uh, November, we had Norm Derek Chrysler talking about Midville Gardens and uh, a bit about the 198th Street Shelter with Bethany Wilback and Dunn. So no activities in December as usual. Then again, we have standing committees and other activities. Uh, Shoreline Park with Sarah Camarese and Kristen Mattioni. Annual work party at uh, Echo Lake with Maria Tulio, Mary Tulio, Maria, ah, Marla Tulio, wow. Uh, Ongoing park cleanup and lake monitoring with Ann Michael and Marla Tulio. The Dwight Bentz acquisition where Marla Tulio kind of took the lead on that and funded by Ron Dembowski, where we had a, a ceremony uh, with the opening of the bench. Uh, Midvale Gardens is ongoing work with Derek Chrysler. Uh, Elno Park Steward is Pat Deegan, which we talked about earlier. Transit Center Cleanup, Security, and Portable Toilet um, is Pat Deegan again with major assistance from Rod Dembowski. The Comprehensive Plan Meeting, with which Natalie Chu put together and organized at the Blakely with speakers from the City of Shoreline. And the new parkland purchased on Echo Lake where Ann Michael found out that two lots were for sale on the lake and contacted the city and they bought those lots. So this is the kind of stuff that, that we've done in this past year. And I see Kathy Goodrich has got herself unmuted so we can talk a little bit about 198th Street and then go on. Yes, um, sorry about that. I'm having some problems with just finding things on my screen. Um, I've had some eye surgery lately and it's it's a little bit challenging. So um, I'm trying to bring out my uh, my um, minutes. But basically in, um, there we go. Okay, so at our last meeting, uh, Bethany Wilbert Dunn from the City of Shoreline reported on the opening of St. Margaret's Place, which is a, a supportive housing project at 198th and um, Aurora. And it has had a history. Um, originally, it was established with or conceived with a few other partners, and that changed over the time. And now it's a um, uh, op opening up. And on uh, November 11th, there were 12 veterans who were moved in there. Um, and prior prior to that, the weekend before, there had been a a community call out for people to come and help with the final setup of uh, moving like pieces of furniture in and um, kind of doing the finishing stuff. And there was quite a large number of people who showed up to help from very different um, sources. So they were they were excited about that. 
Um, there's also a community call out for donations for sheets and towels and, and you know, basic housing things that one needs. And they were, again, overwhelmed with that response. So the uh, organizing group is super happy about that. Um, so the people that are moving in are all um, identified and vetted through something called the Coordinated Entry for All, which I believe is run by the uh, uh, King County. Um, someone can correct me if, if I'm wrong about that. Um, so all of these people have been identified and cleared basically as, as um, you know, uh, uh, both ready for, eager for, and competent at living, you know, on, on their own in this supportive housing environment. Um, let's see if there's something else here. Oh, um, at the time of lease up, there was a commitment to um, the city to house 10% uh, of shoreline residents there. This was property that was as owned by the city and, and on a long-term lease uh, for this purpose. Let's see, some, there were some other people uh, from other local shelters, the Oaks, uh, and then there's a connection to the God's Little Acre, which I think is in Lake Forest Park. Lake uh, City. Lake City, okay. And um, so they were involved uh, with both, and they're both couples and singles who will be, who will be living there. Um, and Diane, you you know, there's a uh, the connection with the manager that might be nice to speak about. Um, no, just that uh, Pat Deegan went by and introduced himself to her, and that she signed up for our mailing list, so she's getting our communications. Uh -huh. And who knows, might even come to one of our meetings. Or yeah, we could actually right. invite her after she gets going. That's right. So yeah. it sounds like, I mean, Pat went by and introduced himself. So it sounds like something all of us could do. I think that's it. All right. Okay. If there are, are there any other reports from um, individuals doing meetings or uh, getting involved with other things Jay, before we go on? Yes. I could, I could tell you that we have uh, 440 people on our email list and 737 on our uh, Facebook page, following us on Facebook. And we probably have around 725 on Nextdoor, but I don't, we don't utilize that much. So always looking to expand the, the email contacts and the Facebook contacts. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else? Yeah, I'll, I'll just throw in just for a minute. Uh, I sent a letter asking for permission to have goats on the City Light property, or the Bedville Gardens, as I call it, uh, property right off the trail, 192nd. And they've been real good about getting back to me, so I expect to have that happen again, which is nice. That, that, it's a little bit of legal uh, smarts that come with that because uh, there was a story of somebody who was on City Light property without permission at one time and got in trouble. Uh, there was some story last year about that. Uh, but this allows it to have, because we put a fence up and we bring the goats in and people come and watch. Um, so it's it's good to have that, you know, get the permission for that. So we got that in the works. And uh, I, I also contacted the city about what they could do if they would want to do about keeping that property open if we stopped doing this neighborhood project. And I haven't heard any word from them. And I, I mentioned in November that we sent a letter and I, they, they haven't gotten back. So I don't know what to think about the city of Shoreline. Um, but we'll still do something. The goats are always hungry. So. Okay. Anyone else want to chime in? For, uh... Diane. Um, just two quick things. One, I, I think I haven't seen you. We haven't seen each other since um, a whole bunch of people in the community planted the Milwaukee forest behind the Shoreland yeah. Museum. Yeah. There were 300, over 300 of us there that day in the freezing cold. Yeah. Cannot believe this is happening, but we, it's really cool. If you haven't been over there, go behind the museum and see the forest. It's tiny now, but it's going to grow. And a couple of us, they're part of this 
Neighborhood Association have been working on that as well. So that's cool. And probably you're going to introduce us to all the other people here, I would think, right? Because I can't, because I see new people and I'm really excited to meet some other people. Yeah. Okay, that's all. We'll do that through the round table. Um, but yes. Thanks. Okay, any other people who want to jump in on reports? And seeing none for now, there will be plenty of time to talk about what you what do you want to hear about in, in the next section after the roundtable? But we need to get on with uh, dealing with the elections and of our board and trying to recruit new board members as well. Um, we have six board members who have volunteered to continue uh, to be nominated for this year's board. We have vacancies for two if we want to add some people to it. So if there are people that are interested in becoming board members, we can add them at any time, but uh, tonight's open for nominations if if you want to make a nomination from the floor. But as of now, we have the the uh, the six of us that have volunteered to be nominated. And I see Dana has her finger up, but she has her self muted. And. <laughs> uh, yeah, there we go there. okay can you hear me yes i would like to uh nominate the current slate of electors for another term and that slate is uh we can kathy introduce goodrich. ourselves yes oh, okay. kathy goodrich yep yep that's me diane hetrick yep Wes Brandon, who's not on camera, he's up fixing an emergency uh, pipe burst. Um, Derek Chrysler. <coughs> there, yes. And myself. Here. Uh, Dale Leiden. It's there. And now that's all of the people that have volunteered to be nominated. And Dana is graciously nominated. Do I have a second for the nomination? Good Can it? somebody who's being nominated second it? I'll second it. Okay. Yeah. Yes, I think Thanks. they could, but we have a uh, <laughs> both motion and a second. Is um now it's it, we can open up. We have a, we are opening up nominations from the floor. If anyone wants to uh, throw their hat in the ring or nominate themselves or uh, right now, don't all jump up at once. Uh, but we, as I said, we can go on through the year. We'll try and solicit uh, new people who are willing to, to take on that role. I would say too, if you're interested in serving on the board, we can, uh, you, you can be elected later. You can talk to one of us. Uh, you can put your name in the chat and ask questions. Kind of what what are the duties and what things would you be doing? And and uh, if you're interested, I would also say the criteria for voting is that you be a member of the Echo Lake Neighborhood Association, which means that you are either a resident, or you own a home, or you own a business in the Echo Lake neighborhood, or work here. You don't or work here. Me. Yes. Well. Okay. okay. Derek, you're muted. Uh, I'm mute. There we go. Uh, I just had a question, Dale, about that. Just to clarify things, home ownership is is not a deal breaker, is it? Because we've got people living in apartments. No, if you live here. If you right, if you're resident. Yep. So I would say just say resident. Uh, living in Shoreline and not saying a homeowner because a right. homeowner applying a homeowner, I would think would scare some people away because you know that's kind of an could, ex exclusive club. You could be a homeowner and not be a resident in that home too. That's true. So there you go. You can either be a resident or a resident homeowner or a non-resident homeowner. We're oh. we're pretty easy on the criteria. Well, that's good. <laughs> well, thank you for the clarifications. 
Um, so we're nominations are open going once. Hearing nothing going twice. We'll do this the uh, the classic three ways third third well, call for nominations that uh, point of order. Um, we had a, a board meeting and we discussed some names, some of whom are actually in attendance of the meeting here. Um, is that something we want to bring up? I don't think we want to pressure people. Yes. Yeah. Since those people hadn't volunteered, I would not pressure them at all. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So having called three times for nominations from the floor, I declare nom nominations closed. We have uh, voting for the six candidates that are on, on the ballot now. Um, without objection, if we would call for people to raise their hands and see uh, if they're willing to uh, support, support the current nominees. Um, yes, I see people raising their hands electronically so, and people raising so their hands voting? physically. Yes, we are voting for the six candidates. If, if anybody, if we have anybody objecting, that's um, give us a thumbs down mm -hmm. or something, and then we'll take a more formal vote. But it's, it looks like we have um, a majority of people voting for the current candidates. One, two, three, four. Without objection, I would call the uh, the slate. I found it. <laughs> any any objections from the floor? Okay. So now we can get back to the, the real um, purpose of this meeting, which is to try and get some thoughts and ideas from you of all about where you want to see us going in the future and what, what you, uh, ways to introduce yourself. We, as uh, I think Kathy mentioned, or there are new new faces here, so or people that we haven't seen in the past. So uh, we might want to go around and and uh, catch a few words from from people. And the suggested opening question, open liner was maybe, "What's your favorite restaurant in Shoreline?" So let's survey individuals and uh, you can say a few words about yourself and where you like to eat. So starting with uh, hmm. Dana, who has her finger up. Uh, I would like to suggest that my favorite restaurant is the Thai Bistro uh, here in Shoreline. And I've got a couple ideas for next year. One that's an election year. We ought to get some candidates at a meeting, maybe October or September. And I would like to participate even in the trunk or treat again uh, for the Echo Lake Neighborhood Association. Okay. And we'll... Go forward, uh, Gidget and Dennis. You're next on my chart there. I'm Gidget Terpstra. My husband Dennis. We lived in Shoreline for since 1973, and our kids all grew up in Shoreline. Um, I have been active and on the Elna board, and um, got too old. Uh, uh, um, and one of my favorite restaurants is Spiro's I love their lasagna and um, another is the Korean restaurant um, on Aurora at about 152nd 52nd. 52nd I can't pronounce the name but I love the food Dennis? That's good. Okay. <laughs> You're going to pass on that? Yeah, I'm going to pass, Jay. <laughs> All right. Uh, Sid and Diane are next on my screen. Hey, I'll go. I'm Diane Lobot. And um, I, I, I hope we're going to talk later about things because I got a long list right. of ideas. But um, favorite restaurant is Yum Yum Thai. 
not too far from uh, Central Market. No, I've been there. Yeah. Yeah, I can't. I can't. I can't think of another place. I mean, I got, I do have to put in a plug for the dollar fifty hot dog at Costco. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Jack Malik. <laughs> Hi. Yes. Um, uh, so my favorite is is uh, it's a toss up. I like uh, Spiros a lot. They're one of my perennial favorites. And then I've grown to like Vault 177. They're really improving their menu a lot. It's more than just like a pub, which is fun. So uh, those two are, are probably my favorite place to go. And just so we're clear, I own property in Echo Lake, but I, I don't live here, at least not yet. So <laughs> Okay. You you qualify. <laughs> well, it's a beautiful community and, and you guys are great. All right. Dale's next on my screen. So uh, I'm Dale Leiden. Uh, lived in Echo Lake since um, I think 1991, when our, maybe 92, when our son was very young. Uh, and so he went through schools. Our children both went through, through Echo Lake and, uh, and Einstein and Shorewood. And uh, my favorite restaurant, I, I joke that my favorite restaurant in Shoreline is uh, Scott's, even though I know it's <laughs> not in Shoreline. Um, we've been going to the Aurora Borealis. It's kind of a nice little comfortable place. And uh, of course, I love Spiros and I love Thai Bistro. And, and I and I love Thank Kelly you. Burger. And uh, oh, there, there's a lot of them that I really like. Where's Kelly Burger? I haven't heard of that. Cali. Cali Burger. Oh, right Cal I'm sorry. Got, I yeah. Got yeah, right next to, uh, right by. They got Cal the robot arms for the for the fries. Uh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, on Next on my screen is Salim Habti. Yes, you, you said it correctly. Thank you. Salam Habti. Um, hello, everyone. Good evening. Um, my name is Salam Habti. I am. Uh, business outreach consultant for Chamber of Commerce. Um, this year, we're just doing uh, the neighborhood association meeting meetups and uh, planning to attend and connect with the neighborhood associations to really um, find a way to link the business owners that are local to the association. So I hope that's part of the agenda and what um, what. Um, how we can support businesses and how the sub businesses can feel um, linked up with the associations. And you might have already doing that. I don't know, today's my first day, but I'm interested in learning more. Um, there are lots of good restaurants in Shoreline that I like to go to. I do love Thai food. Um, my two favorites are Thai Bistro um, and Isaiah Thai Cuisine in Richmond Beach. Um, so usually um, I, I go there often and try to support small businesses there. Uh, thanks for having me. Okay. Now, so, Chris. So I would just say really quickly, Salam, our, um, our goal here as the Echo Lake Neighborhood Association is to create bridges between um, government, uh, the residents, and uh, the local businesses. And... Uh, bridges between all of them and that's kind of what we're we're dedicated to try to do and through uh, many of our um, of our guests that we have at our monthly meetings you know we've had uh, the owner of Dun Lumber and uh, and Sky Nursery and we just uh, we really do want to connect people with businesses and and people with the government and and you know, government and business connect pretty well but if we can if we can help with that we want to do that also that's really our, our reason to be here. Thank you for that, Dale. And a lot of business owners also feel like they're alone or don't, don't know where to turn or not have a sense of belonging. So these associations are great to be a part of. Um, so I would like to learn more, um, you know, do you, is it like a membership? Um, do you pay annually? Um, and also how can they, um, 
how can you support each other, right? It's association supporting businesses, businesses uh, supporting the association. So I'm, I'm excited. This is my first, second meeting. I went to the Ballinger one um, and I'll continue to, to be in the different associations. And, and, um, and when I go to, to do outreach uh, for businesses and they feel like they, they're not sure what's going on around, this is a great place to, for me to refer to. So um, thank you for that. Yeah, and you can always connect with us too. You can always uh, uh, send an email to the board, and we will uh, we will you know answer the best we can. Absolutely, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Welcome. Um, can we get your contact information, Salam? Yeah, can absolutely. You that? Um, thank you. I think. Yeah, I can send it here for you guys. <laughs> Okay. And if there are any business owners here, I would love to connect as well. So my um, goal is to understand your needs, um, challenges, and opportunities, and connect you to resources. So I will put in my email in the chat. Perfect. Okay. And that, next on my screen. Salam was, I'm sorry, I, I just quickly, Salam and I are somewhat together. We um, both are part of the chamber and um, she was the the plus one that I invited tonight, but I mean, she's done such a great job with this outreach and not to belabor this, but um, you guys seem more organized than most in terms of how you connect with each other and how you connect with your community members. So that's actually a really good thing. And these things wax and wane, but um, I think, especially now that we're emerging from COVID and folks are looking for this kind of uh, connection, it's going to be really helpful. We've got a lot of small business things to help people um, either get into their garages and start a home-based business or, if you know, grow out of their garage and get into a business. And that's coming up in May. Oh. That's good. Okay. All right. Moving on to Chris Roberts. Been... Hello, everyone. Happy 2024. Good to see everyone you know, virtually. And hopefully we'll see, I'll see, be able to see many of you over the course of the next year. <laughs> I guess I probably should say I will not uh, say what my favorite restaurant is. Uh, I do have to be a little bit uh, judicious <laughs> here. Uh, but I will give a shout out. Uh, the one place that hasn't been mentioned that I really I um, we do frequent is Mediterranean Oasis on um, near the um, Joanne Fabrics. I've, we've always had enjoyed the food uh, there. Um, and I'm just ha happy to be working with, and I'll be on the council, I'll be definitely working with everyone uh, over the next year. It's gonna be a busy year in the city of Shoreline. And we look forward, I look forward to all of your participation. And for those of you that might not have been paying attention, Chris is our new mayor. So, so Can we have a round of applause, yes. Chris has a, a real reason to be impartial. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But I'd forgotten the Mediterranean Oasis. They are wonderful. I like to change my vote. Oh, I've been having technology issues. Okay, thank you, thank you. Um, all right, Nataline Chu. Hi, I'm Nataline, and I live at the Blakely of Echo Lake, and I've been um, in Shoreline in Washington State um, since um, September of 2022. And um, Blakely is a 55 plus um, building. Um, and my favorite restaurant is Star Pokey on um, right near Costco. It's on Aurora. And I think it's like 200th Street or 205th. Um, my dog brought me in there and I tried and it was so delicious. I was just, it's this little tiny hole in the wall, but it's so good. The flavors were just amazing. And the textures were, uh so incredible. I just highly recommend it. If you like um, um, poke, um, it's delicious. It's like super, it just like melts in your mouth. And they have these like crunchy things and it's the textures and the flavors. Um, and also um, I'm starting, I'm in the process of starting a um, mediation and conflict coaching business. And my little um, elevator speech is, when there are misunderstandings and issues, I bring peace to hearts where all parties are satisfied through mediation and conflict resolution coaching. 
So um, it's going to be an online business and through my, um, yeah, and I've, I've had quite a bit of um, mediation practice. And so um, it's in the process. And so that's why I wanted to get um, Salam's information. And I've been doing this through venturesnonprofit.org. Um, they, they hold an eight week uh, entrepreneur uh, class and they also have coaching and all kinds of resources. And I'm going through the process right now. Thank you. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. Thank that you. is very it's exciting. Good. Please reach out as soon as you can. Um, uh, we love to empower and encourage uh, you to be an entrepreneur and successful entrepreneur. Um, and there's lots of resources for that. I look forward to that. Congratulations. Thank you. Okay. Moving on to Sarah Camarisi. Hi, I'm Sarah Camaracy, um, and I'm coming up on almost exactly three years in Shoreline. Um, and uh, I work down the, oh, my, 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 my restaurants. So I, I very much like Yum Yum Thai and I like Star Poke. And so I was going to mention one that hadn't been mentioned yet, but we recently discovered Zhao Log Bao, um, which is just, just above 145th. And that was really tasty. Um, but I, I work at the park just down the street, which is Shoreline Park, uh, doing stewardship work there. And I would, I heard a rumor that maybe we would think about doing a annual picnic again. And I would love to see that happen. Yeah. So noted. All right. Sarah, the park has never looked better. Oh, it is thank you. beautiful, clean. You can see through. Um, it, it's just thank you for all the work that you do. Thank you very much. Have you had the planting party yet? I know you, uh, through the Green Partnership, you had gotten all of those plants. Has yeah, we did. The, at, at the beginning of December, we went and, and put in, uh, I can't remember exactly, maybe the, between 100 and 150 plants. Right. And they're, they're all just little babies, but... In the next few years, they should grow up and, and sort of reforest that area that we took the blackberry out of. It's amazing. Uh, how much ivy do we have left? There's still ivy. <laughs> the, I mean, the, there's still work to be done. Chris and I walk around and we, we can spot our next project. Well, the funny thing about that park is that the ivy was always so neatly trimmed into these yeah. nice round beds around the trees. The parks department did a nice job of taming it, but we had a lot of ivy. <laughs> okay, next on my screen is Carl Deans. Deans. Hmm. You're not muted, but you're not. Your audio is not coming through. Yeah, your audio is quiet. Yeah. Now you're muted again. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to get things connected. Wrong device, I think. How's that? Yeah, that's good. There you go. So I'm Carl Dentz. Uh, I don't live in the neighborhood currently. I last lived there in 2010. No, 2012. Um, but I've been working with Diane for well over a decade now with Shoreline Area News and do the Shoreline weather. And my favorite restaurant in Shoreline is the tie between Sunnies and Spiros. Okay. What was and the first one, Carl? Sunnies. And? Spiros. Ooh. Sunny and Spiros. Oh, Spiros. Okay. Boy, they're winning the race here, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Next on my screen is Pam Cross. You want to unmute and say a couple words for us. Pam, you have to admit you're here. <laughs> well, it may take a little while for her. So okay, we'll... we can let her hide. We'll, we'll give you a pass and come back to you. Uh, <laughs> Sutur Jain. Okay. Hi. Well, we hear you. We don't see you, but we hear you. Uh, good evening. 
Uh, I'm a visiting neighbor. My son moved into the shoreline area in 2019. Uh, I love the place. Uh, I keep visiting him. I'm basically from India. Today I'm standing in for him. I oh, hope nice. the video comes on. I put it on, but it should come in. Uh, on favorite restaurants, I don't have much to say because we are vegetarians. I'm a Jain, if you know. Jains are very strict vegetarians. And for us, home is the best restaurant. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is the best restaurant. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and uh, uh, Vivek, Vivek is my son. He lives in uh, 187 North. He's uh, told me that he might be interested in the director's position uh, right now. And uh, I told him, okay, fine. Uh, and I'll send him the message that the post is still open. Maybe he'll uh, put in his application or whatever. Vivek okay. Jain. Sounds good. So that's me, thank and you. thank you for having me. Welcome. To if you find a vegetarian restaurant, let us know. That would be something interesting to share. Oh, there are some Indian good Indian restaurants. For us, of course, uh, we make better food uh, than they do. But honest, for example, in the I don't know what those areas are. Those where you have a couple of Indian restaurants, that honest restaurant uh, carries. A, a variety of very delicious Indian snacks. Honest. H-O-N-E-S-T. So okay. it's in that area. Uh, I, I do, I'm I not very familiar because I keep coming and going. And right now, in fact, I'm sitting in Victoria where my younger son stays. <laughs> uh. So it's in that area where you have the Indian restaurant, uh, Indian uh, store. So that place, Honest Restaurant. That's a very good one. I could recommend it. Because it's uh, from India, Ahmedabad. In fact, the city that I stayed in for a long time, wow. and it's a very good chain. So, okay. thank you. Thank you. Good. Is that next to the Indian sweets and spices? Uh, it's. Uh, I'm so sorry. It's Bellevue yeah, right. somewhere. Yeah, we, Bellevue. We, we recently went went and bought the the spices for Diwali. My family went to the Indian sweets and spices, and that was delicious too. If you haven't been in there, <laughs> a couple of, of course. Now uh, Seattle has a lot of these Indian restaurants and stores, so that's a good area. Honest is one. If you want good Indian snacks, fast Indian fast food. <laughs> right. Thank you. Now Valjean. Um. Hi. Um, my name's Val. John is my husband. My last uh -huh. name's Tracy. <laughs> so we, our nickname is John Val John sometimes. So we just have <laughs> very literary of you. <laughs> yeah. So I'm shoreline born and raised actually. And the, I lived in Echo Lake for like six years now. Um, my daughter is a first grader at the elementary school and I've got another daughter who will be in kindergarten next year so starting to get involved in PTA and all that fun stuff um as far as favorite restaurant I have to go with sentimental reasons um Spiro's it was a really big part of being in Shorewood High School um very involved in fundraisers and stuff so it still holds a place in my heart and the tortellini alfredo is Top notch. <laughs> Still love it. Okay. Well, we seem to have scared away Pam. Um, well, but... Welcome, Val. Many of us in this on the uh, on the screen started with children at Echo Lake Elementary. So, yep, it's pretty fun. It's a good school. We're really happy with it. And fourteen yeah. years of PTA, <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. it was all wonderful. Yeah. Okay, Kathy Goodrich hasn't had a chance to become a yeah. favorite restaurant. Yeah, so we moved here in, um, I think, 96. And we've lived in the same house so near Costco. Um, and my two favorite restaurants that haven't been mentioned are the Barbecue Wake and Bacon uh, down near uh, Shoreline, or I mean, uh, Richmond Beach Park. 
saltwater park. And then the other one is the Sultan Hero in the gas station at 175th and 99. Yeah, we chatted with the people and know a little bit about where they come from. They're from Jordan originally. So it's kind of fun to make those connections. Okay. And Diane Hetrick. It is me. Okay. Uh, we've lived here since um, 1978. We moved in. Still in the same house. It looks like it. Uh, we, um, <laughs> we, I do the Shoreline Area News. I think most of you know that. And so I stay up all night. And last night I got around three hours of sleep. So if I fall asleep in the meeting, you will understand. Um, my my current go-to restaurant um, is a teriyaki place across the street from Ballinger Village. And I can't remember the name because there are three teriyaki restaurants, maybe four within, I mean, you can basically reach out your arms and touch them all. But this is the woman who is, uh, her name's Sarah and everybody that meets her loves her and her food is wonderful. And she's always teetering on the brink of financial disaster. And then everybody rushes in and starts to go fund me and raises enough money for her to get her equipment professionally cleaned. And she, it, she, she's just, she's so sweet. She and her husband started this business. They have no other family here. And then he died very unexpectedly. Mm -hmm. And there she was by herself trying to run the whole place. And she's still staying afloat and her food is terrific. It's teriyaki something or other, teriyaki town, teriyaki. Anyway, so she's my current go-to. The only thing about her is that her time management is a little dicey. So if she says her food's going to be ready at a certain time, uh, you just take a good book with you when you go to pick it up. <laughs> Although I have to say last time it was ready. <clears throat> so maybe she's figured it out. So that's me. All right, Derek. Um, yeah, let's see. Am I am I muted? No, you're you're on. Oh, I'm gotcha. live. Okay. Um, yeah. Well, you know, I, I forget the new name, but I, I'm going to say the uh, the full moon tie that's down on uh, what is it, Richmond Beach Road, um, and it it has a new name now. Asaya. Okay, that's it. What is uh, it? Asaya. I S S A Y A. I think. Okay, see, that's why I didn't remember. That's good. But, uh, yeah. yeah I, and we went there just still maybe about a year ago. It, it was good. Uh, when it was first opened, uh, and this was years ago, wow, it was off the charts because the guy who ran it was actually from Thailand. And perhaps these folks are actually, you know, uh, from, from there too because their food was good. So uh, that's, that's my contribution. Okay. And I'm, we've been here since in Shoreline for 1981, my family, or 81, 82, <laughs> depending on which, which side of the family you're looking at. But uh, I'd, I'd have to uh, go with uh, our local pizza place. So. Spiro's again. Um, Stack the deck a little bit for them, but we don't eat out a lot. So when we do, it's either there or Thai Bistro or a uh, place outside of the uh, shoreline, places outside of shoreline. But anyway, that's us now. Um, since we've gotten through the icebreakers and people have been introduced, and I see Diane has her hand up. Uh, you <laughs> I'd yes. say one thing really fast. We I forgot to say really my favorite restaurant, which is nobody said is Fun Ninety Nine, which is you know Fun Ninety Nine, the Vietnamese restaurant, and they those guys are wonderful. They've been there forever. Love them. Okay, now I'll be quiet. All right, not for long. <laughs> oh. Which one is that, Diane? Uh, Fun Ninety Nine. It's the so one that it's just. Uh, south of like if you were at Costco and then you cross over to, okay. you know what I mean? Yeah, I've eaten there. They're good. Well, it's just north. It's just north of the, the the center that. Yeah. You know, the the veterans. The St. Margaret's place. thing. Place. Yeah. Yeah, and, and they're surprisingly large inside too. It looks like it's tiny, but they have a fair amount of seating. 
And they hung on during all the construction and, you know, and the food's great and the guy's great. Okay. Yeah, it's interesting. All those little buildings too are, have been there for many, 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 many years. I mean, I, I would think that um, some of those buildings are bordering on 100 years old. Okay. So now we're moving into trying to figure out what this next year is going to be like for us and what we would like to have, uh, what you would like to have us present and what you would like to be involved in uh, working on and doing things, if, uh, what things you'd want to do online, what things you want to do in person. What do you want to see 2024 go for the Echo Lake neighborhood in general and uh, for us specifically? And I'll open it up to anybody who wants to jump in first. Raise your hand or signal somehow that you're, you want to tell us what, what we should be doing, what you want to be doing yourself with us. And if we don't hear anything, we won't be doing anything next year. So we, <laughs> it's kind of important. Well, Natalie's got her hand up. Uh, I'm not seeing, oh, there you are. Yes, Natalie. Um, yes, I just wanted to mention that there's a number of neighborhood, a number of neighbors in the Echo Lake neighborhood um, that have dogs, and they keep on talking about Midvale Gardens being a dog park um, just on the hill there. And um, yeah, they're just, um, and I was, I guess I have these ideas, and, and actually I'm I'm really busy because I'm kind of looking for a job, and I'm also starting this business, and I would love to be on the board, but I'm just like, I feel like I'm just, there's too much on my plate right now. And also, um, so I also talked to Val. She's kind of, um, <laughs> she's kind of involved too in terms of um, the um, Midvale Gardens, and um, we would love to, um, well, I, I'm going to talk about the dog park because we, we're all very excited about having potentially a dog park on that hill up there. Um, and I got some plans from the person who did dog parks in Seattle, um, some specifications. Um, I was hoping that maybe we could um, do um, use combined grants, the neighborhood grant, the environmental grant and the art grant. And um, because it, dog parks take about $15,000, that's kind of a ballpark figure. Um, it might not be that much, but putting in really good fences is really important. I've heard about from a friend who was on the board of um, a community garden. She said they had an artist put up fences and they were just, it fell down and was like, we really need real fences. We can't just have like fake fences. Um, and then also, um, yeah, kind of working with Val in terms of uh, community gardens in that space as well. So I'll let Val talk about that. Yeah. Um, so Natalie and I got to chatting at Sky once because in the PTA, the sort of sidebar on this is the PTA, a gal named Kate and I have started the green thumb um, part of the PTA. So we're trying to green up the Echo Lake property as well. We just recently put down three loads of bark chips all around the trees. Um, and we're looking to connect with the principal and see what we're gonna get approval on as far as planting more trees. And so then Derek, I do need to reach out to you and connect because Natalie and I were both chatting extensively about Midvale and like, we love the idea of pushing the, not just the community, but the city to see if we can get some traction and and turn it into a good community space. Um, I don't know if there needs to just be more buy-in, if we need to get signatures or something, but like we're totally on board and would love to help with however we can. Um, dog park would be amazing, community gardens, food forest, like anything to get the community available to use it would be wonderful. So um, I'll send an email afterwards, but would love to help however we can to turn that space into something that's usable for everybody. And I want to say one of my neighbors, she's collecting um, signatures, um, physical signatures from neighbors who are interested in having a dog park. Um, so she's interested in, and there's other people too. Um, but yeah, it's kind of, I'm, I actually would like other people to, I'm kind of um, talking to everyone, but um, I would love someone to head that up. And I'm kind of, kind of encouraging people. <laughs> so yeah, we'll see what happens.
Yeah, I'd just like to jump in here um, uh, with, uh, can people hear me? I don't see my face on this. Yeah, we can hear you. This is a new computer, so I'm still trying to figure out the, the tricks to it. But I, I think it's uh, opportune that uh, that uh, Mr. Roberts is in attendance at the meeting because, as I understand from what I just heard, he's our new mayor. Uh, he is definitely someone who uh, we would need to court and uh, get on our side. I have always felt that that property, which, by the way, is important to, to, to say, is the property of City Light. And City Light has a track record. I don't want to get into it because I don't fully know it, but I do understand from people like Dale that they're they're uh, they like to hang on to their property. I would like to see, personally, since I'm a neighbor, that become a uh, a park, which would mean the city would have to sit down with the lawyers with City Light. To make that happen, but I've heard of places being uh, given to a city for a dollar to be to be a park. It's a beautiful place. We've got uh, up up team new apartment buildings right across from the Blakely that are going up uh, that need um, more 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 place for people to go. And if a dog park was part of that, I'd be fine with that personally. I think that you know anything to keep that from being overgrown again and turned into the junky uh, haven that it was over the last uh, four or five decades. So um, this is definitely a project that would be good for a number of people to get involved with, and uh, it's gonna have to include the city. So hopefully Chris has got some feedback. Hey, Derek, do you mind putting your email in the chat yeah so yeah let me let me go oh. down and see if i can pull this off here <laughs> thank you and i would just note that the mayor has left the, the meeting here so you're uh, talking directly to him yeah. okay well i would just note that i sent him an email about this very subject so that that's that's kind of efficiency i believe in but um so yeah uh to to do the you, you see you go to the chat i got the chat up here and then i just start typing Okay. Should say to all. Yeah, it says right. Or you can direct it to someone specifically, but. So, so I would submit too that if you have uh, people who have worked as uh, planning dog parks and things like that, you know, this may be one of these months that we may want to have the this as the focus of the month the monthly meeting. And invite. Uh, some from council members from the city and and uh, and other community members that can really get behind this and support this and you know this is uh, it's certainly a way of keeping keeping this property uh, from being overgrown and and like you said uh, it was it was a terrible place where um, there were a lot of people taking you know well yeah just say there was a lot of needles in it. Where where is this exactly, please? Uh, yeah, it's uh, it's the it, you you walk on the interurban trail, and you let, let's say you're on one eighty fifth. Let's just let's just suppose you're on one eighty fifth. Yep. Yeah, maybe you've been to Starbucks. Well, it's at one ninety. Walking up by Sky Nursery. Keep walking, and you'll get to the hundred ninety second North Street. And if you look east, you'll see a big grassy knoll that the city maintains yeah. and uh, everybody who has a little dog takes their dog there but behind that on that same property up until just to uh, say four four years ago it was just uh overgrown and uh seemingly impenetrable but it was penetrated by those people who wanted to actually set up a camp and live there and uh i'm i'm a neighbor and i just you know, when I retired, I said, I'm going to take that project on. And uh, I now have approval from City Light to bring goats on that property. And we've done that for four years. And if you walk by there, if I were, were to ask you to donate money to help pay for the goats, you'd say, why? Because it looks great. <laughs> but that's oh. that's only because. So, I yeah. love those little guys. The room, they have a rent a room in program. And, and I think that's great that you can bring them by there. Uh, well, yeah, it, it, it's not free, but uh, Ed does belong to the rent a room and uh, the gals out of uh, uh, Bashan Island, that particular business. 
Um, but he's up in, in Briar and he's got a big contract uh, with the uh, city of uh, Kenmore. So he's no longer stressed about trying to, you know, come up with food for the goats during the winter. But uh, we did, we cleared it out this last summer for four days. Uh, when we first did it, it was, we spent 12 days and that still didn't get it. Um, but every year it grows back, it grows back less. And last year we had quite a drought and that really made a difference on the plants not growing back as well. Um, but I'll do it again this year just because, uh, well, I love the goats. They're just, just fun critters. Uh, but also because uh, that's all it takes to keep that place open. And if we can do something on that property, that would be good. I've I've been in contact with uh, Dimbowski about this. Didn't get much feedback. I sent an email to uh, Bristol Ellington as well as Chris Roberts when he was just on the council uh, back in October, and I didn't get any feedback on it either. So I don't know where the city really, you know, they they talk a good talk about you know neighborhood security. But this is this is definitely neighborhood security. And and what Dale says is true. It was it was deplorable and it was dangerous. Uh, my house, my neighbor's house, they haven't been broken into lately, but they have been over the years. And I can't say A plus B equals C, but it it's not a good idea to allow uh, un, you, know, you know, contained plants to, you know, I mean, the blackberries, everything just you wouldn't go in there unless you, you felt you could hide. Well, and, and there are certain uses that City Light is more than happy to have on their properties. You know, I mean, it, it's stuff that they don't have to maintain if it's uh, maintained by others. And dog parks, uh, parks, community gardens, those kind of things are a, a really nice, a good use for that, knowing that we'll never own it. But, right. you know, it may but, be, but, a, it may be a, 10 year lease for $5 or whatever. Right. So, well, case in point, Echo Lake, the majority of Echo Lake Park is owned by City Light. Right. Right. But they, they, get, they have access to their power cables and uh, it, it, it makes use of that park. So this is just kind of an extension of that whole idea of like, say, it's fine. It, it's fine if it stays city utility land. Uh, because you never know, maybe they do have a use for it down the road. But right now, they're not using it for anything. And to not do something with it, just, well, case in point, that's what was going on before we started cleaning it up. Yeah. So let's... I, they they did have one thing, and that is they don't want any permanent structures. Ho uh, however, yeah. uh, permanent structures, I'm not sure what that means, because the, the benches and the tables are pretty permanent looking, but maybe that's because they're just small. Yeah, no, it's not a permanent structure. Right. Fence is not a permanent structure. Right. So let's take this offline. It's I think we we have sure. a really good. Uh, I think we have a really good interest, and let's talk with Natalie and Val Jean and Val and and sorry, <laughs> I keep seeing Val John, um, and and others that they've been talking with, and let's let's perhaps um, set this up as a one of the meetings we have. A, here in the upcoming months. There that you go. Sound? That's what this meeting was for, was to yeah. find topics. There you go. So now let's find another one. Then. <laughs> okay. Uh, Salam, you have your hand up. Yeah, I just wanted to add quickly, anything that has to do with pets, um, um, Seattle, uh, Barker um, store in 165th and um, 516 Northeast 165th. Um, the Seattle Barkery would be a great uh, business to connect with. Uh, they did um, Easter egg hunt for pets in Seattle last year, which was a lot of fun. And when uh, they first opened up that Seattle Barkery in Shoreline, that was a thing that we talked about. And um, she was pretty excited and passionate to bring that here in Shoreline. So if you guys decide to... Um, talk about dog park um, or anything pet related, there will be a great business to connect to. So I just wanted to throw that out there. Can you put that into the chat so we have that as a... Uh... Yeah. Thank you. 
Does she still is she still have her business in Ridgecrest? She had set up um, a storefront. Say that again. She had a, a brick and mortar space in the Ridgecrest neighborhood. Is she still she, there? One sixty fifth. That's where I saw the store last. I would imagine so, but I haven't been there. Oh, I recently. thought you said one fifty fifth. No, one sixty fifth. Okay. Five one six northeast. One sixty fifth. Yeah, she's got a right in the you know where the crest is. Yes, she does business everything dog. It's pretty cool. It is. She had, she had the she had the dog truck. She had a food truck for dogs, and she did that for several years. Yes, she did that in Seattle. I agree. Okay, Sarah, Sarah Marie's writing the name right now. Thank you, guys. Sarah, you're up. Uh, yeah, I had a, a couple ideas for potential speakers or, or topics to discuss. And uh, so one of them is my my friend from West Seattle recently came out here to, to view our Juneteenth mural. And there's been an addition to it. And and uh, so like hearing a little bit more about that mural, the artists who've been involved, and I don't know if there's uh, an intention to add more to that mural. I think there's still a little bit of space on the wall. So I, if it's gonna expand, I would be curious to hear more about that. Uh, and then the other topic that I'm I'm interested in, uh, I came from Kenmore and I'm still involved in the there. I still still on the Facebook group for the Kenmore neighborhood, and I saw them talking about a North King County pool that maybe Kenmore and Seattle and <laughs> oh, Diane's face. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it may happen. It may happen. Yeah, Kenmore's taking the lead on that, but I heard yeah. it was kind of stalled. So, yeah. I mean, if, if anything were to happen with a pool, I would be interested in in knowing what that was. Yeah, maybe we could get somebody to come talk to us about it, if they're doing anything. I can check on that. And, uh, cool. Okay. And Val. You're, you're yeah. Um, so... I was curious if anyone would be interested in um, having like a neighborhood specific date for a garage sale. I know Richmond Beach does one and I've always kind of thought that was awesome and would be nice to have like a date when everyone collectively kind of has a garage sale together because then you can post it on various sites throughout the region and then more people will come in and um, kind of wanted to see if that was something that this organization would organize or if that's something that anyone was interested in. We can put it out to the general population and see if anybody bites. Um, yeah, I know several neighborhoods have done those community garage sales. They do, uh, you sign up for it and you get your you get your address on the on the list and then they make a map and the map shows every place that has a garage yeah. sale and so you pick them up at, uh, you distribute those to all of the garage sales so you could pick them up any garage sale you go to and you can and everybody has their sale the same day at the same time yeah uh, there was another neighborhood that did them too the one um must have been the one kind of around Meridian Park Elementary, I think they did one just once though. Yeah. I mean, we'd make sure not to do it on the same weekend as Richmond Beaches, but it just yeah. seemed like kind of a good way for everyone to clear everything out and you might get more traffic and potentially more sales that way. Yeah, and that was the idea too. I wanted to add that one thing our neighborhood, my, my local neighborhood did for garage sales, they actually, had everyone just come to a central location that wanted to sell stuff and then a parking lot somewhere in the neighborhood. Oh yeah, Ridgecrest, that's right. They do, yeah. well, they do oh, at, yeah. at individual ones, but that they go to Tabernacle Baptist Church and everybody gets a parking stall and you set up your garage sale there. Gidget and Dennis, yeah. you did that one time. I have a photo of you being charming at your garage sale. How did it go? Did you sell stuff? You're muted. 
It was wonderful. When the kids were growing up, we used to have a lot of garage sales because we told the kids whatever they sell, they can keep the money and buy something else. So when, when our kids are now have are grown and have kids of their own. But anyway, um, it was wonderful for, um, we had a good time. We met a lot of friendly people. And by the way, that is one of the benefits of being a part of this group. You meet a lot of people that you would maybe not ever have met before. And it's well worth the time and effort. Okay. Well, Diane, I know you had a whole bunch of things you wanted. Well, it's not that many, really. <laughs> well, you said it was. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll just say a couple. Sid and I were talking about it this morning. And I, I mean, I was framing it in my mind, like if I looked into my community, what's needed? You know, what's here, what's needed? But one of the things that keeps coming to mind, we've done a bunch of stuff at times about emergency preparedness. And, you know, it seems to kind of be something most years, I think. But I, I kind of miss the days of it being really practical things. And part of me, I, I don't know if people here have done things in their own neighborhoods. I don't mean the philosophical kind of stuff or, oh yeah, over in Kenmore, they have that group that's meeting. But I mean like the real thing with your neighbors next door and how we're going to approach that and stuff like that. So I'd be curious about that. I don't know who would talk about it or if there would be people here that would want to talk about it of what they figured out. But so something about emergent, practical emergency preparedness stuff was one of my thoughts. Um, also, I thought about... Um, there, there's going to be an increasing number of kind of interesting things at the museum. And I know Kenneth came this year to talk, who is the curator at the Charlotte Museum. But um, it might be something to ask him, you know, again, because there's there's really an increasing number of kind of neat programs and things that are starting to happen. So that was another thought. And Sid, say your thing about electrification. And Sid had something. Go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead, Sid. What did I say? Elect around electrification. Oh, yeah. I get, you know, to the extent that, you know, people like the idea of talking about heat pumps like we did one time last year. I mean, it, it's an ongoing um, education on that broad topic of, of electrifying your house um, or en energy efficiency and those types of topics. So to the extent that there's ongoing interest in that, it doesn't necessarily have to be a whole topic for a particular meeting, but it ought, you know, it could be an ongoing point of discussion. Well, that discussion took us into a really interesting discussion on uh, solar panels, also. That That's night. Right. Yeah, yeah, and there, you know, it, it's what I find interesting is that it topics like that require. Um, kind of a multi-dimensional way of of evaluating it yep. um you know the you know to, to the extent that you bring up solar panels there's you know there, there's the technical aspect which is interesting but ultimately people are generally interested in it because of a financial return on investment yeah and that's where it gets to be kind of interesting um because uh like a lot of things in life, the people that are pushing you a certain way probably have a vested interest in pushing you a certain way. Right. And we have a neighborhood organization here where we have smart people that can think about stuff like this. And we have some people that perhaps have actually done it and learned lessons, good or bad, along the way. Um, so it's kind of a way to compare notes. Sid, um, uh, not, not wanting to get off off track here, but I, I wanted to follow up on the fact you talked about heat pumps at that meeting. How is your heat pump working under this cold snap? Uh, it's doing what it's supposed to do, but okay. but it what we have here, I knew from day one, um, was undersized for our house. Okay, mm -hmm. so it's per it's performing perfectly, but. Um, there are compromises. I've chosen to make compromises in my house in terms of living with it. Um, 
So that's the, the multi-dimensional aspect of it. Somebody who doesn't like heat pumps is going to say, it, my house is cold. It's not, it's not holding up. But that's really, you know, you, it's kind of like asking a, a five-year-old to lift 500 pounds. I mean, that's, you know, if they lifted 100 pounds, that would be great, right? Yeah. Um, so it's, it's basically doing everything that it's supposed to do. And I'm living with the limitations of it. That's one reason why I have a hat on. Although it is kind of hot in here right now. Um, and, and, but we went through weather that I would consider to be outlying weather. Right. For, for this area. So yeah. kind of like, you know, I'm not the kind of guy that's going to buy a big, big honk and pickup truck for the two times a year that I need to get something from Home Depot. But there are probably people that do that because they always want to be able to 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 go to Home Depot, even if they never go, you know, so I have something that meets my needs 95 percent of the time. And I get great gas mileage in a sense. And then there's 5% of the time when it's coming up short. And last week or this past few days has been one of those days. Mm -hmm. So anyhow, yeah. I'll stop there. The other thing that I wanted to at least put on the, the bucket list for this year is seeing if we get if we can get somebody from planning and development services with the city to speak to us about, about uh, middle housing. No, probably can. You know, I don't feel like we have have had anybody from that department speak to us in the last maybe couple of years. Yeah, I don't think we have. And I've kind of lost track as to where we are on that on that legislation that was kind of moving through the state level about about um, uh, uh, I don't want to say getting rid of single family zoning, but basically, I guess, expanding um, what could be permitted in, in what's currently single family zoning. Yeah, ADUs and other things. Yeah, I'm kind of interested in, you know, when, when we're going to get to the point of having uh, duplexes and triplexes. Well, it is happening. It is come, happening now. Come to my front room, Sid, and see the four story <laughs> next that was built next to me. <laughs> and there are duplexes. Just drive down through the middle of, of the Ridgecrest Meridian Park area, and they're just there's duplexes everywhere. They're really nice. I mean, they're big, but there's like whole blocks of them. Okay, this is all stuff that's being built under under new zoning. Uh, yeah, I think so. And of course, uh, where you live, you're not really in the heart of it. But where I live, we got heavily zoned. Uh, they they zoned. I I don't think it's MUR seventy, but we got zoned. Yeah, we did. All the okay. way up to yeah, Holy Cemetery. For the sake, for the sake of this discussion, I'm not necessarily talking about the rezones that happen probably because of the light rail station. Yeah, okay. That's a that's that's a well documented, you know, uh, set of events. I, I'm talking about at least what's been bubbling up the last year or two, where where there's been a push to to basically, you know, as they say, eliminate single family zoning. Yeah, I, I I was understanding that 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 happened. That didn't didn't in that a state law that was passed that allowed all cities that you have to be a really small but, city to to yeah. prevent that. Yeah, so I, we can, it's already a law. You know, so it I think it's one of these situations where so the state, you know, enacts something and then the local jurisdictions have to come up with their own impl implementing. Yeah. Um, regulations and I, i've just kind of lost track of it i don't read i don't see anything about it um i don't think i've seen anything in currents about it i don't it, it's just a topic that uh, surfaces every few months in the in the like the seattle times where obviously a lot of people are squawking about it um but you know people squawk about housing getting too expensive around here um Okay. And, and then people squawk about not wanting to have or not wanting to give uh, a little more flexibility to single family 
mm -hmm. um, residential zones. Anyhow, I'll, I'll leave it at that. I, I I think it might be nice to have somebody from Planning and Development Services from sure. business. Yeah, you're basically talking about all all facets of housing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Rachel's been here before. I'm sure she'd do it again. Right. The, the head of the planning department. Yeah. 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 You're Rachel right. Marble is her. a friend of the group. Yeah, she is. Wonderful speaker. And you're right, we haven't had her for a couple of years. Pandemic, no. I just sort of lost track of the years. Okay. These are great ideas, guys. Don't stop now. Well, in that same vein, I think uh, I counted up a huge number of apartments being opened up in the next, over these last couple of years in the Shoreline area. I'm wondering how that's playing out in terms of, of um, rental costs and whether it's actually having an impact on market and who's, who's moving into those. Um, uh, the Blakely, which is right in the center of all those, it has like 40 vacant units out of 125. So we have a lot of vacant units now. I think that's due to all the new apartments that's that have gone in. Um, so yeah, I guess um, it's pretty competitive right now in terms of for, it's a renter's market in terms of um, availability with all the new buildings coming up. Yeah, well, I, I would hope it would put some downward pressure on the, the rental prices that I've been hearing uh, are pretty outrageous, so. Uh, the thing is the developer won't rent for, for a certain number less than it costs for them to build it, right? Right. So all these new apartments are not affordable for some people, unfortunately. They, they, the MFTEs make them affordable. 20% of them will be affordable at, at each each building. So there's 11,000 new units coming online over the next two years in our three mile stretch of uh, the Aurora corridor and um, a few that are dotting the uh, landscape in, uh, excuse me, the, the light rail. But um, yeah, there's a substantial number of uh, uh, low income housing available that nobody's taking advantage of at all. And they don't really understand the, the MFTE program, but it's there that they, they got to build yeah, I, front of them. Sounds like a resource connection issue, possibly. Uh, I am personally having, I think some of it's qualification too. Like you have to have a certain threshold to qualify for those low income units, but those, even the low income units I've seen listed or not, what I would consider low income. Right. Gee, if only we knew a real estate expert who could talk to us about that. <laughs> Who could that be? All right, you're on the list. I had a question, a clarification. To, if, if we go back just, just for a minute, was that 1,100 units or 11,000 units? 11,000. Wow. 11,000? Yeah. 11,000. 11,000 yeah. units. Um, and I can even count some of those off for you. I mean, one, uh, one ninety second, the and Aurora right there at the... Uh, Park and Ride is is almost 500 for the canopy. Just across the street is going to be somewhere between 250 and 300. That's 800. You've got the uh, what is it they call it the current? Um, that was a while ago that they built that, but that was like three four hundred. Um, you've got 1400 that are going live at uh, Merlone Geyer's project at Sears. Um, gosh, what else? There's like uh, oh, there's uh, like. 300 and 300 at the Ion Town Center and the Geo, roughly. And then there's, you know, just behind that is going to be some senior housing, which is great. Um, you've got 230 some odd that are being uh, scoped out for uh, Richmond Beach at uh, 8th and 185th. Um, that, that's not, you know, it's under public review right now. But um, and then there's just a litany of others, uh, again, all along that corridor that are that are happening. Um, a lot of the projects have been a bit on hold because of the interest rates. <clears throat> They're going to go live soon. Well, and and all the uh, all the units by light rail also. And I know there's going to be more. Oh, there's there's tons. That, really, there there's already projects that are being permitted. Uh, you can you can do you know maybe that is a great thing also to have the. Uh, you know, Rachel come and speak to that and maybe even Nathan Dom, the economic developer, because he's yep. 
just as engaged in that. He's a wonderful guy too, good speaker. But um, yeah, it's it's important how it's changing the shape of the city and, and what's happening. Uh, and then the light rail is, I believe, going live end of uh, spring, early summer um, for 148th, 185th, and possibly the 236th over Mount Lake. Mm -hmm. well, thank you. Which well, I was I just going to say, there's there's a bunch of, uh, I don't know what you call those, the, the collected lots that have been listed and not sold yet around the uh, 185th station. But like there's there's a bunch of big ones that are definitely going to get developed at some point. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of these. One man that we, we were dealing with for a long time, I think he's sort of dropped out, but he had bought a chunk of property right across the street from the light rail and down a block. So where there's houses now, I know there's going to be a big building going up. So there's a lot of places like that. Plus all that stuff at 145th, that's pretty interesting. Mm -hmm. Where 12 neighbors got together and sold their houses as a unit. Well, you know, for uh, subjects for uh, one of the meetings, I, why don't we invite the uh, uh, Save Shoreline Tree uh, group to talk about what's happening to the forest canopy before shoreline loves to talk or the city of shoreline loves to talk about the forest protecting the canopy forest in this area and yet it's fairly diametrically opposed to allow uh just blanket construction and it, it, is this consciously being attended to or is it just well these trees had to go it's sort of schizophrenic well, I think I think that bears. I think that would get a, a a large group of people if they were aware of it, interested in that meeting's topic. Okay, I got her on the list. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Moving on to anything else that would there be, would there be interest in the um, in the uh, uh, the the trolley, the interurban trolley, and a development of the trolley line and some of that historical stuff. Would there be any interest in that? I'm not sure what you mean, Dale. Well, the the, uh, the history of the development of the interurban trolley and oh, and okay. uh, the impact that it had on shoreline and <laughs> the growth of shoreline and. Okay, so okay, so so the history, kind of local yeah. history. Okay. Oh, I yeah, I think it'd be interesting. Okay. Yeah, I don't know a lot about the history, but I'm I'm interested oh. in sort of any historical topics. We could pro. I wonder if we could rouse Vicky Styles out to do that. Nobody knows more about it than she does. She's the retired director of the Charlotte Historical Museum. She's talked to us before specifically about the the trolley and, and the uh, two hundred that Echo Lake. That two hundred oh. used to be a trestle. Mm. Right. Mm. And there was a mill on Echo Lake. Um, okay, putting it on the list. Yeah, I have some resources having developed the uh, the park in Linwood, the Heritage Park and uh, and the trolley barn and been in, involved in the restoration of uh, the old number 50 trolley. Yep. There, there is an original trolley there in Linwood, mm. in case anybody didn't know. It's in its own little building. It's really cool. That's my building. I know. And I've been trying <laughs> to get you to write about it for I, months. So, Let's see. But job. yeah, you know, it's, I mean, I can get somebody from the, the historical society up there and maybe Cynthia. And it's a, it's an intriguing story. You know, it used to take 55 minutes to get from downtown Seattle to uh, Everett. Let's see. In 1919. Pretty incredible. You can't do that now most times. <laughs> right. right. Yeah. Now, th along the inner urban trail, there are art pieces that uh, they kind of show a fellow with a lantern and that uh, at different oh. different uh, positions is how they, they passed information to the trolley. And I understand that at least one, if not more, of those pieces had been stolen at one time. Really? Do you know if they have been replaced? How rude. 
So, You're talking about the squares that are in the ground, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Right. They're they're yeah. they're every five hundred feet. I don't know, a thousand feet. I I don't. But but there there's at least there should be at least four of them. Four. Yeah, I think that's right. Right. And I remember a few years back that one of them was missing. Oh yeah, dear. Yeah. So hopefully that's been replaced. I don't know. I'll have to check. Um, send Gidget and Dennis out. <laughs> They're the the walkers of the neighborhood. They were they were uh, they were right on the trail. Okay. Yeah. Let's see the trail. Trail history. Well, we've kind of talked around it, but there's going to be this major opening of the uh, the light rail station here. And there'll probably be a lot of of uh, interest in how that's going to work and how it's going to go forward. Oh, and they're building the roundabout there. Paul went by. I didn't, I wasn't with him. And he yeah. says it's just huge. It isn't just like one of those little wincy ones like on 10th and 185th. He says it's really big. And, and, and it's the one that, so it serves the station. And it's their idea is to get the buses in fast. So they're doing a huge roundabout. I think it'll go like from 5th Northeast to 8th, something like that. So that's going to be interesting. So are, are, the, are the buses on 185th now running? Because I, I understand that 185th no. are going to add more buses. Uh, what happened? Probably not, not things that are serving the station. That that roundabout it has been half built for you know the last month and they just they just finished well they they're working I don't know if it's open yet but they just did the half the other half of it yeah. so I don't know I don't know if we've got two way traffic yet but it, it wasn't through. open three hours ago every every right. time I think it's, every time I think it's done they dig it up again yeah I think it's going to be nice though it's it's like roundabouts generally keep traffic moving faster and I think it'll be good. Yeah. Well, and as much traffic as we'll have going into that station, that's that's really important. And I, I was really shocked. I was really shocked at how much commuter traffic there is on 185th. Mm -hmm. it, it, people going to Lake Forest Park, that's their main route. Come down Aurora, go on 185th, and then kind of you know spread each way to get, get into Lake Forest Park. Uh, mm -hmm. One year when they I was coming home when they were doing the... Um, the, the North City Jazz Walk. And so the street was blocked off. And God, the cars were backed up all the way to Aurora because they had to take a detour. It's amazing. Yep, lots of folks. Yeah. So I'm gonna check in. Um, are we gonna have, are we gonna invite uh, people who, um, I guess are in charge of the routing, um, tra public transit, public transit uh, routing? Because I've been, curious about um we have a number of people at the Blakely who are um who have walkers and wheelchairs and who are who don't really get around very well but there's really no bus stop in front of their you know I guess on Aurora but going up um going east or west there's nothing you have to go you have to walk to 185th to um catch a bus which you know for people with walkers that's a kind of far so I would I was curious about you know making bus routes more convenient for seniors to have you know it might not seem like for regular people but I'm just I was curious if we're going to be inviting someone about from public transit they just did something pretty major on on re, redrawing bus routes and I'm sorry, I wasn't paying attention to your part of town. I was paying attention to my part of town, mm. but it was the, mm. the emphasis on it was how to get people to the transit stations. And so they were doing major reroutings and they were pretty interesting. And what I figured out is that from where I live in the very North part of, of Echo Lake, uh, my transit station is, is uh, Mount Lake Terrace. Mm -hmm. It's not 185th at all. It's not like Terrace. And I will be able to go out and take a bus to that. And I'll even maybe even be able to get home. Not sure about that, but might be able to get home. So I, I don't know. I'll see if I can dig out those maps, Natalie, and see what they had. See if I can share that with you to show you what they were planning to go by the, by the, by the Blakely. 
I mean, right. after all, we've got a transit center across the street. Well, so. perhaps yeah. We, perhaps we can find someone from Metro uh, Scheduling and and uh, route route scheduling and. Well, we probably could get Chris Arkills back for that. Who? Chris Arkills, the guy that we oh. talked to about the transit station. Right. He's their PIO, so let's see. That's but it would be interesting maybe to talk to somebody about potential future bus routing and you know, what where are the buses going to go? Because it's my understanding that they are going to stop at Aurora Village, but then they're going to go back out to Aurora to 185th and down 185th to the uh, 185th station. Well, there was a route that came in through the middle of Shoreline too. Yeah, it isn't just an it isn't just a dive in and out. It's a it's a go through. No, that's that Aurora Village goes to 185th, definitely. Um, right. Yeah, I'll see if I can find those maps. Oh boy, somewhere. But that may be a good. That may be a yeah, good they, meeting. They may not be ready. Or I don't know how much future planning they're going. Because a lot of it's based on demand, but still, right. yeah, good topic, Madeline. Yeah, well, they've got to be planning for it. I mean, it's the planning doesn't happen overnight, and we're within two years of opening. Well, I think this year we're supposed to open at least one. Okay. Yeah, because my understanding now it's going to be twenty twenty five before they oh, late twenty twenty five. I am not surprised. I guess Jack, go oh, Jack left. But, but um, yeah, mm -hmm. I, I, that's my understanding. Well, so far, have we had enough topics to carry us through the entire year? <laughs> I am Great. not complaining. I am not complaining. This is fabulous. Yeah, no, this is fantastic. Okay. Well, uh, anything else people want to bring up here? We could. I'll just throw out something um, kind of when uh, Sid and Diane were talking about electrification and energy efficiency. And then um, I think you someone mentioned about um, kind of local neighborhood emergency planning, the really practical stuff. Mm -hmm. Diane, was it the CERT group that had those monthly or not monthly, but neighborhood map, map your neighborhood? That. Uh, that that was that, a special project. Yeah. And the problem well, go ahead. Well, I have all I have a collection of those pamphlets that came out. And we did that in our court of about 14 houses. And and I whether whether that is available still or not, it was a very practical um way to think about emergency planning um and not high level. So I affirm that idea. And then the other one that came to mind was um, the energy efficiency. I would be curious about what people's anecdotal, uh, doesn't have to be, you know, expert, but anecdotal experiences of what products people use, what little things they do at home, how they drive their car differently. Um, I think there's a lot of community knowledge about how people save money, save water, save electricity you know, um, don't pollute their own yards with, you know, pesticides or whatever. So that really practical um, aspect is appealing to me. Yeah, I, I really enjoyed the conversation last year between Sid and, and Larry Mongers about um, about the, you know, the solar panels and solar panels. Larry's experience adding solar panels as, as, an, as an electrician. Oh, okay. You know, adding solar panels to his house and his experience and his practical wisdom, and yeah. you know, maybe that's maybe that's one where we grab Larry and and uh, have him have a part of that. Sort maybe, of. Uh, oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, I. I was going to say, sort of tangential to that is, uh, I know that. Christine Lovelace uh, administers the Soak It Up program for Shoreline. And so like I, I have taken out three quarters of my lawn and replaced it with wood chips and planted native plants. And so this, there's a, I think it's up to $2,000 grant for anyone who wants to replace their 
uh, turf grass with something that would soak up more of the rain and, and sort of keep more of that moisture in the landscape. Um, yeah. I think the last yeah, time cool. we had a presentation on that was probably 2017. I mean, probably when it started. Yeah. Well, and, and we, we also, um, we had a co-meeting with the city when they were looking at uh, putting the rain gardens on, uh, on Ashworth. That's right. And so that was 2015. So it's been it's been a long time since we talked rain gardens and and uh, natural uh, landscaping practices for homes. So it's kind of got out of style. So there's another topic. Yep. It hasn't gone out of style for me. Like I said, I got rid of my grass, and I know the neighbor who helped us work in the park got rid of his grass. And, yeah. I had a friend who got rid of her grass and replaced it with green concrete. Oof. Yikes. Not quite what you had in mind, I know. That's what I like. <laughs> <laughs> nice linear but, drains. <laughs> well, they, they do have uh, permeable pavers. So, like, I yeah. don't know, you could. Right. They've actually started using those. Okay. So, when um, when I did redid the. Um, the Kirkland Transit Center by the library and the baseball fields and all that they had a they had a uh, a mound of of dirt or of, of earth that people would sit on to watch baseball games, and so the city wanted uh, a walkway on top of it with permeable concrete, and um, they wanted it to be able to soak in. Well, that was an engineered berm absolutely impermeable mm -hmm. and so what would have happened was it would have soaked in and then it would have run down where the people were sitting so mm -hmm. we put the permeable concrete in and a french drain underneath it <laughs> and the city was happy and all the people who sat there were happy because they weren't getting wet <laughs> so Great. That's kind of good. a funny thing yeah but that's yeah, that's another another good topic. Okay, are we petering out here, or are there still more <laughs> more items to cover? And I I just wanted to I just wanted to throw out one thing. Mm -hmm. Am I muted or am I talking? You're, you're yeah, on. Thank yeah. you guys. Go for it. Um. I'm curious whether amongst the uh, the people in this uh, association, whether there are, you know, subject matter experts in different topics that they might be willing to come and share their knowledge um, with us some night. Oh, I it, it's just a general thought. I I have no idea who you know who these people might be and where they are and how you would find out. Um, part, part of me is is hoping there's somebody out there that can sit me down and explain what generative artificial intelligence is. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, we're probably so, do. Okay. That's, that's just an example, but but um I guess I guess the other way of looking at it is that I realize that our, our topics are generally inwardly focused towards things related to our neighborhood. Um, but occasionally I think it'd be interesting to have a, a, a more general topic that's that all of us as citizens maybe need to be a little more conversant about so that the media can't manipulate our thinking any more than they try. Yeah. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll leave it at that. And that, like I said, that at the top of my list is generative AI in terms of what it is, and what it isn't. Um, uh, so, okay, I'll, I'll leave it at that. Thank you. I'll talk to my neighbors. We may have some subject experts there. Well, my, my feedback about AI is there's going to be early retirement for a lot of people. Yeah, there's that. 
Okay. Thankful they, they still can't dig ditches and uh, fill out the proper paperwork for approval of, by the feds for reimbursement. <laughs> so. yeah. Well, one, but, of the, one of the questions that maybe a, a future roundtable is, what are you involved in? <clears throat> because when I ask people that question, I get the most interesting ans yeah. <clears throat> answers. I just asked that of a guy who's a chess expert. And he told me, told me that one of his long-term hobbies is firing rockets off. It's like, mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> I always get interesting answers. Okay, I'm sorry, Kathy, you were going to speak? Oh, not me. Oh, I, I was, I was going to go off topic here, but I just wanted to thank Diane for the, the Shoreline Area News. Uh, we had the big... A uh, house fire behind our house. Uh, actually, I think right, right behind sort of Dale's old house. I was going to uh, ask you if you knew him. Kitty corner from us, and yeah, well, and so we 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 spent Sunday morning watching this house burn and not knowing what was happening to the family inside, and so it was uh, nice to to read the shoreline area news and and get an update on that. Um, unfortunately, the the dog died, but but we were relieved to hear that the people were fine. Yeah. Yeah, that was, yeah, that was bad. Uh, I was going to ask you if you knew who it was because I, you know, I got the address on the map and figured out like, oh my God, that's where Sarah lives. That's our neighborhood. Yeah, yeah it was, was Red Cross took them. So I don't know where they are. Do you know them? Are they people that you know? I, I, I have not met them. They have a, the, they have a dog that barks a lot. <laughs> um, and, you know, I know my neighbor directly behind me who, who is right next to them, who has, she has talked to them more. I guess that the, the family is originally from Mongolia and they, um, um, she, she was concerned uh, that they might even be out of the country at the time that it was happening. And like, we, we were just wondering, like, do these people even know that their house burned uh -huh. down? And, well, um, they do, but I, the fire department said the house was, quote uninhabitable so yeah I, I mean that that was that was clear from watching it like it, there was yeah it was a lot of fire so that well, was, and thank you for that i guess i can look it up but was that directly behind my old house at nine uh, I, I i think that lot is bigger so i think might have it might some of it might have been behind you okay. it, it was mostly behind uh steve and cindy okay wow but yeah it's the house is there's a there's a really pretty little cul-de-sac neighborhood that goes beyond and behind uh, Shoreline Park, right? Yeah. And it's yep. kind of tucked in behind the playing fields too. Lots right. of trees. You wouldn't know you were anywhere near the city when you're there, and not a lot of houses. And now there's one house that's in pretty bad shape. So I'm just sorry to see that happen to one of our neighbors. Sorry to see it happen to anybody. But yeah. Yeah. All right. Time check here. We're at uh, 8.55 roughly. And uh, so anything we want to do before we wrap up? Anybody have any? Uh, so, for you know, this used to be the time when Gene thanked all the board members and all the people <laughs> who've been involved in, and uh, I think uh, acknowledging her and her many years of work, I think is important. And, uh, you know, I ran into Larry over the holidays a couple of times and, and uh, you know, he was always right there by her side and, and, uh, but uh, yeah, I think uh, just acknowledging her and, and then thanking everybody for um, jumping in, and after she passed away, it was uh, it was a shock to all of us. And and uh, but I just uh, you know being a member of the board and working with the board and working with the others who have who have just jumped in and taken taken things. I just I just want to thank uh, you know convey my thanks to everybody for your hard work. Sometimes I feel like I don't pull my share, and I mean, thank you, Jay or Dan, Dale. <laughs> All right, you too, Jay. <laughs> yeah, but uh, but yeah, no, I just I really appreciate working with all of you. Well, thank You're you. welcome. Mm -hmm. And yes, so say we all. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. 
All right, Jay, I think we're done. Yeah. With out objection, we'll call it uh, adjourn the meeting and thank you all for coming and participating and helping us plan this next year. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you for coming. You guys have a good night. <laughs>